In this video, I'm gonna go through the same setup as I've done in the other videos that I have on Boyle's, Charles, Avogadro, and Gilesac. I'm gonna go over the graph, the particulate view, I'm gonna model it, and then we're gonna work some sample problems together. Now, this time we're gonna do three sample problems together. So there's the first one, if you wanna write that one down ahead of time. Here's the second one. And then last but not least, I kind of gave us a kind of a challenging one at the very end that I'll work with you too. But you can always pause the video and try them on your own. All right, so let's get started first with the concept. So we're gonna keep temperature and volume constant. Remember there's four gas variables and we're gonna keep these two constant and we're gonna let moles and pressure vary. Now, unlike before, I do not have the images in here. So you're gonna to have to draw the, your own particulate view and graph up at the top here and you can put your examples on the bottom. All right, so this is the particulate view. We have, let's just say 0.4 moles, which I have like four little particles in here. We'll say they're helium and it has a pressure of two at this temperature and this pressure. I didn't add any vector arrows, but if you'd like, these need to look on average, you know, about the same in both, okay? But again, remember temperature is the average kinetic energy. And in this sample here, we need to have them looking, you know, about the same average movement, okay? I just have more of them in this container. So if I kind of draw all these particles again, on average, I need their temperatures to look the same. And then same with the last one, but I'm gonna skip that because the video will take too long. So we wanna add some, you know, some arrows to that one to show again, they're staying at the same temperature. What happens though, is this has more moles, so then the pressure is higher. Now what I did was I actually doubled the moles, and so then the pressure should be doubled. And over here, if I put them all in the same container, I have, you know, 0.4 moles of, you know, the helium, we'll say 0.8 moles of the neon, and so I have a total of 1.2 moles. I have more moles again, so if you look at the kind of the gas law, that means the pressure should also be higher, and it should be equal to the two pressures added together. So this portion over here is what most books will say is Dalton's law, is when you have the pressure total and or the moles total. But what I like to do is use it even also as an equation that you'll see in the example problems. Okay, but before we get to the example problems, let's look at the kind of a, a model of it also. So here's my, you know, drawn out particulate view, but let me kind of show you one that um, I kind of, you know, built just with some little containers. So here's my, you know, 0.4 moles. Here's my other container that has the exact same volume that I have, and hold it right here. That's the 0.8 moles. And again, they're both gonna have the same temperature, so I kind of put them at the same um, amount of kinetic energy on average, and then you should hear that this one had more pressure, okay? And then what if I put them all in another container, okay, the same exact size, what you should notice, okay, is that the total moles make sense, okay? So if I had move them all over to this one, okay? So here's my total. I think it should make sense that if I have the same volume and I have the same temperature, I have the total moles in here, and there's that total pressure again if I'm moving them at the same temperature, okay? So that's kind of a, a model of it, and I think that that should help you when we do the practice problems understand how to solve for these things and kind of predict, you know, what the answers should be. Okay, all right, so let's get started with the practice problem. So here's the first one. So if you wanna write that one down, uh, have your calculator ready, and let's just get going. Um, here's kind of the, the notes right here we'll keep for just a little bit. So for this one, it's just the standard straight up kind of, I call it the easy version of this gas law, which is that the pressure total is gonna to be all those individual partial pressures added together. So that means the pressure of, in this case, the a diatomic oxygen, the pressure of the diatomic nitrogen. Yes, you still need to know your diatomics, at least for labeling, it would be nice. Your pressure of your carbon dioxide gas. And then finally, there's some water vapor. And I just made this problem that it, you know, maybe this is something from our lungs that we were breathing. These are all the gases that are mixed in there, okay? Pretty easy. I think this version of uh, Dalton's law is the, you know, like I said, the easiest. So then you just say I have 93 millimeters of mercury. And then I have to add it to, because remember, it's just like this. I'm just adding them all together. So the total pressure will be all of these just added. Okay, can't say that enough. Um, so this, you just keep adding in these numbers. So let's just do this together. So 565, just trying to make sure I don't copy them wrong, you know, down wrong. Um, there's my millimeters of mercury for then the carbon dioxide. And last but not least, a little bit of water vapor. 
Um, and there we go. So then the total of all this, I won't even add it up on the calculator. You just have to kind of you know, check it yourself. Um, there's my total. Now, the only thing I did with this problem to try to make it a little bit more challenging is our P tot. That's what some people call this P tot, um, P total is in millimeters of mercury and I wanted us to have an ATM. So just thought we'd throw in another conversion. Maybe you didn't watch my pressure conversion video and you want just another example. And the fact is there's 760 millimeters of mercury in one ATM. So if you do take this now, I will do the calculator now, 740, or sorry, 743 divided by 760 and we get point nine seven. And then significant figures. This is a new one, I'm gonna add this in. Usually we don't have this as often. Remember there are, we followed here, the sig fig rules for adding and subtracting. And that has to do with decimal place. So you get to keep all of that. And now but that we kept that, that does have three sig figs. But now that I'm dividing, now I follow the other rules, which is total number of sig figs. So now I can keep this out to the third sig fig. Um, and this is dividing instead of, you know, adding and subtracting. So that one is the only thing that's, you know, I think that's the only thing that's super challenging about this first problem. All right, let's go to the next one. Here you go. You can write it down first. Um, I try to kind of make this one pretty creative so that, you know, it's a little more real life. We have a helium tank and we're going to take some helium out to kind of fill up a balloon. And so what I want us to calculate is that new pressure that that tank would have. So it's almost like imagine if I have this total, these total particles and I'm going to take some out. And I want to know what the final pressure is. So I'm just going to write this down like it's the other gas laws. And you can add this version, um, once I show you it, to your set of notes. Maybe I'll grab that right here. Okay. So my initial pressure was 2.4. It says right there. And my initial moles, remember we use N for moles, is 0 0.13 moles okay, of helium. And if you want to put HE for helium. Now I'm trying to find my new pressure and I just left it, I believe in ATM. So we're not gonna mess with any conversions for that. And then our new moles, now be careful. It says we took 0 0.03 out. So 0.13 minus 0 0.03. And I did kind of easy numbers here. So we have point, um, just simple old 0 0.10 moles. Oop, just barely fit it there. 0 0.10 moles, I'll put it in purple below here. 0 0.10 moles of helium that are left inside that tank. So what it is, is there is a correlation between these two and this is a version that, you know, you may wanna to add to the top uh, page of your notes that these two can be related, okay? To me, this is a version of Dalton's Law that I think is super helpful that if we keep, again, temperature's constant and volume is constant, we can kind of create this, this version, in my opinion, of Dalton's Law, all right? So you might wanna add that just to your front page. And then we're gonna solve for P2. So you're gonna convert and move over. I shouldn't say convert, sorry. You're gonna transfer over, um, isolate your equation to get P2. So, cause I'm running out of room, I'm just gonna say P2 is gonna then equal N2, P1, and then over N1. Now again, make sure this makes sense too. Before we go any farther, where is that graph? Okay, so we are going down in moles so the pressure should go down. We have less particles colliding with the walls of the container that are the same size at the same temperature. So the pressure has to go down. So before you, you know, get too far, make sure you kind of make a mental prediction. So 2.4 ATM, oops, that's pressure one, sorry about that. And uh, N2 is 0.1, I just kind of put those in a different order, running out of room here. And then divided by the uh, original moles. Okay, and again, moles should cancel. Need a bigger piece of paper to use with this one. And then we just have to solve for it. Just to save time, because I've got another another problem to go over, I'm just gonna tell you that the answer was 1.846 uh, ATM. I can, you can try it quick and pause the video if you'd like. And then we can only keep really two sig figs, so 1.8 ATM is the final pressure. And that makes sense, because it should go down. We had less particles in there, and this tank didn't change in, in size, and the temperature, you know, that the tank is round is, didn't change either. All right, now to the next one. I'm gonna work this one with you, but if you'd like to give it a shot on your own, it's another version of Dalton's Law. Dalton's Law is really kind of a creative gas law, in my opinion. There's a lot of versions of it, or ways to solve for it. So if you wanna give that one a shot, pause the video and have at it. All right, if not, let's just write down what we know. So we know P total. P tot is 2400 and then tor. I'm just not gonna capitalize tor, even though I probably should. 
And then it says we have um, one of the moles is of this mixture. It's actually a common mixture in uh, scuba divers. Was two moles of our helium. And then we know another moles, we know the moles of our oxygen diatomic, okay? But we don't have to worry about the molar mass, which is nice. Okay, so what we could do is we could say we do know, like this is going to equal the pressure, partial pressure of the helium plus the pressure of the oxygen, but we don't know what those are. That's actually the point of the problem. But we do know the moles. So I might kind of, you know, you may want to write down here something that we do know is the moles total. So this is one of the versions down here. Okay, there it is. So the moles tot, okay, is two moles plus six moles, which is eight moles. And then this is where the problem can kind of go in different areas. You can get percents, but I'm just going to solve it using that version of this gas law that I kind of showed you. And I'm just going to put it right up here again, that pressure of one. In fact, I'm even going to use, say, pressure total compared to moles total is you could pick a gas, let's say pressure of the oxygen gas compared to the moles of the oxygen gas. And that's actually how I'm gonna start this problem right now. I'm gonna use this version, kind of my ones and twos are my specific particles. So let me just show you. Um, so what we can do then is just say P total was two, four, zero, zero. I'm actually gonna put the numbers in this time and not isolate, because I want you to see that you could use um, kind of like percentages so P H E, just in case you solve this differently, oop, I'm gonna do, I guess I lied, I'm gonna do, I could do this one here. I guess I'm gonna do helium first, moles of helium, okay? So that would be the moles of the helium, but we do know the pressure, or the moles, sorry. So we can switch this out, sorry about this. We did know this, and that is right here, 2.0. So sorry, kind of making a mess of this a little bit. So then we can find our partial pressure of helium, put it over here, is gonna be moving the two over, okay? So kind of just, I'll even use, I'm glad I actually made a mistake and have it in color now, so I'm just gonna move that over right away. So it's two moles, that'll be in the numerator, and that's of the helium. And then I'm gonna multiply it by the total pressure, and then divide it by the total moles, okay? And then that's where, again, you can kind of see, I'm just going to go like this. This is my 2 over 8, which is 1 fourth. So it's 1 fourth the pressure comes from the helium. So the pressure of the helium is going to be, um, let's just check it, just in case, 2 divided by 8. Okay, there's your 1 fourth, or 0.25, and then times 2400. This is where some people could kind of kind of do some mental math to figure out that that was the pressure of the helium, okay, partial pressure of the helium. Now you've got a couple choices. You could kind of do that all again and kind of use, I'm just gonna kind of box these out and then kind of use the other version I had on the right, which is kind of where I thought I was gonna start, but I decided to do that one first. And that was because the, I think the math is easier. So that's the helium plus I have it written first. So then you could just subtract it from 2,400 to get the oxygen. And that's what I'm gonna do because I think that's the easiest. So to find my oxygen, I got to take the 2400 minus the 600. And that's kind of why I picked this one. Because I thought you could probably got to do some mental math there. But if not, 2400 minus uh, 600. And we get 1800 mmHg for the oxygen. And again, if you add these two up, that's your total pressure. But again, why the pressures were, you know, so different was because their mole amounts were different. So again, kind of look back, two moles of it was helium. So that's why out of the eight moles total, a fourth of the pressure was from the helium. Go back to kind of here again, okay? With these, you know, pink and blue uh, little particles, we call them. If six out of eight, okay, and if you're not good at fractions, this is a great review, six divided by eight is 75%. So 75% of the pressure is gonna come from the oxygen. So if you kind of take 75% of this number, which is what I did to get this 1,800 in the end, um, or if I take 25% of the 2,400. So kind of gives you a, a couple ways to solve this problem. And I want to go through a couple extra, you know, extra ones with you because Dalton's Law can be a little unique. And again, as I've said in all the other videos, if you want to copy this uh, set of notes, make a copy, print it back to back, You'll have some you know, room to draw your particulate views and graphs on the top, some example problems on the bottom. And if you print this back to back, fold it in half hot dog, you'll even have room for gas stoic, which I do a video on my YouTube channel for that already and for pressure conversion. So both these are there if you'd like them. 
and then gas variables. And we can't do anything without following these ideal gas uh, KMT uh, rules about how ideal gases behave, okay? So all of these rules that we have here, all these gas laws are only uh, available to use, to you, <laughs> coming to you, if it's a gas, number one, and if it's acting um, ideal. All right, good luck chemists, and thank you for watching.